still great twelve. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Linda. Okay. Okay. Uh, Linda. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening, and welcome to Terjago.id. From who, from who you don't know, Terjago.id is a place and a community where we meet together and we learn and grow together. So today we have a special meeting with two of our amazing friends. First is Naura Arifa from Indonesia and also Jessica from United States. You can hi like doing this by your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And today I I will not alone. I will not be alone because I have my friend Dia, Dia Dignos Aiman, that will accompany me being a moderator here for one hour from this until twenty nine. Yeah. Yes. And uh, what did what what have you what did you think about a school life in uh, U.S. Dia? Do you have? Uh, well. Yeah. In my opinion, uh, maybe we can use uh, free clothes, not uh, not a formal uniform in the, when we are going to school in USA. Uh, what about you, Arima? Oh, I think we have we can choose our class. Like we can choose uh, our passion. Like if we like biology, we can choose biology class. Uh, okay, to so know that is it true or false? Just hear today presentation. So friends, hope you all enjoy today's presentation and don't hesitate if you have any question and also if you have anything to ask, you can uh, write in the chat. Yes, or you can uh, speak up and introduce yourself. Yeah, so just be relaxed today because today we learn English together and also we learn That's about right. the different culture in US and Indonesia and the school life. So I'm first welcoming Naura Arifa. Times is yours. Thank you, Dima. <clears throat> okay, let me start. Um, I will share screen for you. Uh, Dima, I'm sorry I can't share screen because you disable me to share screen. Okay. Yeah, you can now. Okay, I will try. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, all of you can see my PowerPoint? Yes, yes, I can. Yes, I can. So today's webinar, we we can talk about, about school life and cultural diversity. So, yes, we start. Uh, as an Indonesian being, if you didn't know me, so you don't know who I am. So my name is Naura Arifa, and I'm senior student from SMA Negeri Satu Padang Panjang, exactly from US Sumatra, and I'm 16 years old. And yeah, I think that's all. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, about giveaway, Dima uh, will be announced. Okay, okay guys, so uh, this is amazing because later you can get this kind of picture from uh, leaves by you giving us the testimony, testimony of today's uh, webinar. So you have to write it on your Instagram and post it on your yeah, story. So you, uh, yeah. uh, and also don't, don't private your Instagram because if you private, we cannot see the story. So later you can ask right. about this giveaway and yeah, we will announce it tomorrow. Let's go. You can okay. continue. So, uh, so what is the software in this webinar? Uh, in, uh, okay. Um, the today's webinar we will tell about scholarship and some about culture diversity and school life so in the just for your information uh between the usa and indonesia is distant fifteen thousand kilometers okay we will in the opening section i will introduce uh, what is my scholarship so my scholarship is the KLDS program. This is award to high uh, to senior high school, high school, high school. 
senior in Indonesian students. So during the program, uh, all of the student exchange will live with the American family and all. But how about 2020? Yeah, 2020, uh, as we know that the world war um, can the impact, uh, impact from the COVID-19 pandemic. So my program is changed to virtual program. Uh, I know this is a bad news, but maybe we should more sensory from these situations. Yes, maybe uh, sometimes that what we want is not good for us, then what we don't want is good for us. So we all of student exchange in Indonesia and and the world will be sensory from this bad news. Maybe it's just, it takes time for us to understand good plans. We just don't clearly see it in the beginning. Uh, yeah, this is uh, some support from me to you if you are tired of struggling so you should rest sufficiently and then get up again to catch up but trying hard is not enough you you should to do well about your effort so yeah so that's all about the opening section so we'll next about the cult uh, about the placement organizations that i participate in so Placement organization is a non-profit educational organization that promotes and arranges international student exchange to foster positive development of the world's young people and to support international peace, friends, and cross-cultural understanding. Um, and my placement organization uh, in the was in the Puya Loop at Washington. So this is my uh, local coordinator. Uh, my virtual friend and my house family. Even though uh, all program changed to virtual, so obviously uh, our student exchange keep in touch with their host family. So we will do it uh, via Zoom meeting. Okay, next. So what the activity I I joined during the virtual program? So the first is Disability International Day. So this activity, my placement organizations, um, celebration of a Disability International Day. And the interesting about this uh, activity that we know about uh, uh, actor of Phil, uh, Harry Potter movies, that Daniel Radcliffe, he suffers from dyspraxia, causes difficulty in speech and movement, muscle coordination. So from, and also the David Beckham, she is a professional soccer player, but we do know that uh, he suffers from ataxia phobia, a fear of disorder on attitudinous. So from, 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 from this, we learn about the, this is a people that can don't make us shortcomings as an troublesome for their life. So the second activity this is a box contest. So this is a um, place to student exchange to share their culture to the world uh, through the box websites. So in this box contest, I joined to make a video about the most uh, delicious food from Minangkabau. Um, I think it's, this is a traditional food called Changkwa. Um, yeah, so the next activity is the peer-to-peer -peer project. So peer-to-peer -peer project, this is a collaboration between uh, American students with the all of student exchange to resolve the global issues in the pandemic situations. So actually the global issues, not all about uh, mental health projects, uh, but there are many global issues like but, well, plus plastic pollution, uh, cyberbullying about cultural and many more I think so um, I am joined in the mental health education uh, project uh, yeah so this is uh, the main topic about this webinar uh, yeah but cultural diversity so 
I spare to four parts uh, about cultural diversity that I found during the virtual program meeting. So the first is a family value. Um, but before we, we, we next, um, maybe some of you understand what I'm saying, or I should so, slowly or... Oke, okay, teman-teman di sini apakah uh, karena orang ngomongnya kecepatan, boleh untuk tulis di kolom komen ya. Kalau kecepatan, tulis G. Ada yang kecepatan? No. Mungkin yang lain? Yes. No. Oke, mungkin agak diperlambat ya, Kak Naura. Oke, siap. <laughs> yeah. Oke, okay. we next about cultural diversity. So, the, the, the part one is about family value. So, during the virtual program, I realized that my host family um, have a family oriented to keep in touch with their children. So, they make a co-working space between the children and parents. And this is, I rarely uh, see this uh, in Indonesia, but This is, I think, uh, the the good activity, uh, the good uh, space from uh, the my house family. They make a co-working space between children and parents. So in the one room, in the one room, uh, there are uh, children's desks and the parents' desks. And if they are working, they are working together. Um, Yeah, I think this is a um, make a uh, lots of family time and they can they can feel close uh, between their family. Yeah. So the the second is the greeting culture between children and parents. Yeah, in Indonesia as we know, before we go to school, um we uh, greeting we greeting with my parents uh Maybe we uh, we kiss the parents' hands before we go to school, but in America we we really uh, we, we really see this culture. So they when they go to school, we they just say goodbye, yeah, like this. Okay, the next ah uh, this is um, yeah can determine their own life when they are six, uh, 18 years old. Uh, this is based on my host family stories. They allow their doctor to get married, even though the doctor um, just um, 18 years old. Yeah, maybe this is, um, they have a powerful reason to do it. But uh, as we know in Indonesia, Um, getting married in 18 years old uh, and uh, um, uh, we know but uh, getting married in Indonesia uh, to in the 18 years old uh, children but in America they can determine their own life when they are 18 years old uh, yeah about The fourth about the senior housing. In America, we rarely see uh, when the old parents um, still live with their children because uh, they choose to the senior housing. It doesn't mean they didn't they don't love their children, but they just um, prepare themselves and if uh, then and if they. Uh, life in the senior housing they can get socialized okay about daily cultural diversity in america and indonesia as we know and this america there's a new so, so i think some advice from indonesian people when go to the us uh, they should uh, bring a bottle water when they go to the us so the six is about the most of them shower at night Uh, but not at all of them uh, shower at night, but 
just some people shower at night because they, those who choose the shower at night, uh, think that uh, they can sleep better, and if they let from go to, uh, let go to school at uh, in the morning, so they can uh, go straight to school. And the seven is about pets are considering a part of their family, uh, both indoors or and outdoors. They uh, we we usually see that the American family have uh, pets uh, because they uh, they consider a part of they consider that pets is are part of their families. Okay, the egg is the most of them use shoes when entering the house, but I think when the shoes is really, really dirty, like a mood, uh, they didn't use in their house. Ah, this is a nyan. I think this is interesting. If given a gift, immediately upon in front of, of the gift giving. So this is based on my friend's stories. She told me that uh, she, she was given a gift from their American family, American friend, American friend, yeah. So when they get the gift, they immediately uh, get the gift uh, into the bag. So my their American friends confused and waiting to looking to my friends uh, pan the gift in front of uh, of of her. So because they are confused, so my Indonesian friends like um, I'm wrong. Uh, so uh, why why you why you still still uh, still in front of me? Like uh, said the Indonesian friends and the American friends told yeah of course before because I I want to see what your reaction about the gift your like or your dislike about the gift that I give uh, I I give to you oh yeah yeah I'm sorry I'm sorry we uh, said the Indonesian friends so if you uh, if you get a gift from the American I think you should immediately open in front of of the gift giving the nice about the school um, some people get freelance from school uh, this is due to financial constructions, but not all of people get a freelance from school. And the next is the take a private car to school when you are 16. So when you are not yet 16 years old, so you can go to school with the yellow bees or you as close to your parents. Okay, the next. Uh, this is calling the teacher by name, but I think this is um, not all of people uh, calling the teacher by uh, by name. Uh, maybe this is uh, just some part of them to do this. Okay, the next, the real American food. Uh, based on my host family stories, they tell me that the real American food is the fast food and the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you can see the picture in this PowerPoint like this. So yeah, uh, this is very different with Indonesian. The Indonesian have the most, uh, have the many inter traditional foods. And yeah, the American just uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich and the fast food. Okay, about the holiday. Uh, this is uh, Halloween. So this in this picture, this is from my um, from my local coordinator or my yeah local coordinator. So this Halloween is the big mainly activity in the USA. Um, Halloween it's a uh, scary elements, but so that some of families didn't don't care about this <laughs> Halloween because they didn't take uh, one experience in this Halloween. So when this Halloween, many families go to the farms to um, to get pumpkins. And after they get pumpkins, they carve the pumpkins. And after that, they, they 
place the pumpkins in their porches. After that, the two, two miss curve out and they celebrate high drive, high, high, yeah, high, high bikes. Um, okay, next. Uh, okay, the next holiday is about Thanksgiving. When Thanksgiving, uh, my this is a picture from my local coordinator. So this is, uh, and actually my local coordinator have uh, 17 students exchange. Uh, they are from Europe, uh, they are from Thailand, and many more. So this is the picture. So when Thanksgiving, my local coordinator celebrates by uh, cooking together. They make a turkey, pumpkin pie, chocolate pie, uh, and something. And many food they make together. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, when Thanksgiving, uh, one by one of uh, my uh, of the family uh, say that what are they grateful in this year. So after uh, it, it it's due when they dinner. So after the Thanksgiving, they have uh, celebrate uh, Black Friday. So when Black Friday market, all markets in the USA is have a very big discount. So all of the uh, people hunting discount even early morning. Okay, the next and this is the last. Yes, about Christmas. Yeah, we will be be coming soon. Uh, when the Christmas, my local coordinator um, cut the tree from the outside, and after that, they bring the tree into the house, and they decorate the tree, and the um, decoration of Christmas, they buy, they buy uh, from the next city. Yeah, so the photo below, this is when my uh, local coordinator holiday before the Christmas, um, they go to Mount Rainer. So Mount Rainer, everywhere you run, you can see the Mount Rainer. Uh, yeah. So this is also with the 17 student exchange with my uh, local coordinator. Mm, yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry if you understand what I'm saying and I'm sorry for my mistake. Wow, thank you so much, Naura. A really great presentation. So next, uh, I want to remind you guys to wait. Yeah, this giveaway, don't forget to make a testimony of today's webinar. So you can uh, tag tarjago.id, tag, tag naufa and also at Working Arts, and you will get this kind of picture, the leaves, and you can custom by your face. And yeah, also, yeah, and also, uh, don't forget to, don't private your Instagram, because you will post it on Instagram story, and don't private your Instagram, okay? Make the really best testimony, and you will get this free, yeah? Okay, next, Dia, you can continue. All right. Thank you for uh, sharing your presentation, uh, Naura. And okay. So I uh, will post this sharing, uh, share, screen sharing. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's my turn, isn't it? Right. So it's my pleasure to be a moderator for another uh, presentation. Uh, so we have uh, Jessica from US and uh good morning isn't it yeah it's around yeah. Eight good morning jessica yeah. good morning <laughs> all right uh the time is yours okay um so i'm gonna talk about kind of diversity i see in my school life and i'm gonna talk about the activities i partake in in my daily life in terms of like activities with school and such um I go to a pretty big school. I live in southeastern Michigan, so we're in the most populated part of our state. And, and so my school has over 6,000 kids between around 14 years old to 18 years old. And we've got three buildings. So we have a pretty big school compared to most American high schools. 
And because of that, we get a lot of different people in our district. And because there's so many people and there's so much diversity in the area, it becomes easy for anyone who comes in to be able to feel like they're not an outcast, they're not alone, and start to fit in places. We have a lot of clubs, we have a lot of student organizations, we have a lot of cool classes, and I think it's awesome that I get the opportunity like this to kind of meet so many people who are different from me and be able to just partake in the culture of our school, which is pretty big. So yeah, some activities I do with school, I'm in the International Baccalaureate Program. So I'm a diploma candidate, which means I take six uh, rigorous courses over my junior and senior, my last two years of schooling. And I also take a theory of knowledge course, an extended essay on research course, and I do CAS hours. Um, so I specialize in hours that promote my own creativity, activity, and service. So I like, I have these rigorous courses which make me a good academic person, but then I also have these like service activity and creativity components that let me become more well-rounded. And so I'd be really about trying to support the well-rounded candidate. Uh, we already, we also have other programs at our school. We have an arts academy program where um, you do kind of arts-based learning for several years. And then at the end you become, you do this one year long project to kind of produce something to see of your arts academy time. We have a STEM program where we have classes specializing in science, technology, engineering, and math. And I think we have a biomed program for students who are looking to go towards being doctors and nurses and such. So we have a lot of those cool opportunities academically. Um, outside of the academics, we have a lot of clubs. We have a ridiculous amount of clubs. There's um, a zombie apocalypse preparation club where they talk about what would happen if there were zombies. Um, but there's other ones that are like the African American Student Association who put on a wonderful show for Black History Month every year. Um, we have an Indian American Association and they put on this awesome dance show every year. So there's a lot of cultures on display where people are proud of who they are and where them and their parents and their grandparents came from and are embracing their own aspects of culture while still assimilating to American culture. So I think that's pretty cool as um, someone who myself is not that diverse, being able to see all these different cultures come together. Um, something I love that I'm able to do most years is I have a lot of friends who celebrate Diwali, uh, a traditional uh, Hindu holiday. And so I get to go, uh, go and eat food with them and have meals and set off their little fireworks and sparklers at night and just kind of like learn from them and watch their parents pray and just kind of completely is see this culture that I'm not used to one night a year. It's pretty cool. Um, in terms of other th things I do with school, I do student ambassadors, which allows like students who come through halfway through the year, like if their first day of school isn't the regular first day of school, we'll like guide them around for the day and kind of help out and make sure they get to their classes, they get textbooks, they get on the bus, they get food at lunch, they know where they get the good cookies, like there's things to learn. And so you gotta help out with that. And another thing we do is we work the, with the counseling department at our school to help students sign up for classes next year if they're not familiar with the classes. That was probably my favorite thing to do through student ambassadors because I didn't get to take tons of classes as a student because I decided to do two year classes with IB. And I know we have a lot of cool classes. Like if you wanna like go into culinary arts, we have a million cooking classes. If you wanna do business, you can practice running the school store. If you like animals, go take zoology. It's a lot fun for us, you know? It's a good science class and being able to talk to kids who were like I don't know what I want to do next year I need to graduate and get those credits but I also want to take classes that aren't miserable for me to learn in while not like stressing myself out too much and I would help students one-on-one -on -one try to figure out how to put their course schedule into the computer but also what classes would be best for them what's a good balance for the next year and how are they gonna succeed through what classes they choose? So I really like being able to work one-on-one -on -one with people through the things I do, because I feel like I get a lot of new perspectives. And I think that's something awesome about the 
inclusivity and diversity in our school, being able to learn from people. And then now when I look at the world, I know I'm seeing it this way, but someone else is seeing it a different way. And being able to know both of those perspectives gives you more holistic view of the world, I think. Wow. Yeah, we've, we've heard a lot of your school systems and also what you had on your school. So now we're changing to Nora. Uh -huh. What about your school life, Nora? You can tell us your story. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dima. Okay, uh, as you know, and as based on my presentation before, I still school in Indonesia, so I didn't go to school in the American school before because due to pandemic uh, COVID-19 conditions. So yeah, my school in Indonesia, like the usually school uh, as you, <laughs> like we go to school and uh, at, uh, at seven, seven and until the three, three uh, until the 3 p.m. and yeah, I think that's uh, usually normally the Indonesian students okay okay what's the most and uh, interesting things you had in school virtually like you, uh, you you already start school with Jessica and friends right and what is the most interesting things okay uh, best on um, virtual program um actually my school uh when i virtual program so my school and the jessica school uh is the same uh, because we have one teacher to um uh, to arrange all of students uh between the student student exchange and the american students so when the virtual program uh, I th um I guess this I didn't yet uh start my school uh, my American school my American school start from January I think um so during the virtual programs we have um peer to peer projects with the my teacher so my teacher give us um, some talks about the global issues uh, there are many global issues right like plastic pollution, cyberbullying, cultural diversity, and mental health projects, and many more. There are, uh, there are nine, nine global issues. So my part is the mental health projects. So to resolve the global issues in the pandemic situation, so I and Jessica make uh, Instagram uh, about the mental health projects yeah so we we call is inter health projects inter health dot project so in that instagram page we uh we introduce about the mental health so during the virtual program just like that the activity um we meet after saturday yeah and we meet every saturday so we discuss about what will the next post about uh, our Instagram. Yeah, just like that. Okay, now back to Jessica. Uh, I heard that you and Naura is in one group that talking about mental health. So why did you choose the topic of mental health, Jessica? Personally, to me, something that's become really important during these pandemic times when I've been like, have been quarantined in my house and such, especially in the early spring when it was really intense impact was being able to take care of myself to some degree to keep some normalcy in my life so it began with easy things like okay i need to make sure even if i don't go anywhere i still need to shower every day it makes me feel better i feel better about things um i like getting fresh air i like doing i ended up like crocheting there's just things that help I think keep me mentally in a good spot and so when I was given the opportunity to pick what kind of group I wanted to be in mental health stuck out to me especially because I was like obviously I'm no mental like health professional mental illness is not something I specialize or know tons about but I'm pretty comfortable with being able to advise what people should do I'm 
a friend people often come to for advice and I'm very much you need to hydrate you need to take a walk you need to sleep and I think this mental wellness component is really essential to who, like being okay as a person uh what are the obstacles uh from the program that uh, you work with uh, Naura uh, what are the obstacles while you controlling it like the trouble or the problem uh, yeah Bo, uh, Naura and Jessica uh, okay uh, for me the trouble is about the management waktu before eh, I'm sorry management time management <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> management waktu oh my god manage time management <laughs> okay time management management time management uh, about the posting uh, in our Instagram page. Um, uh, because we just have uh, uh, five people in one group. Yeah, I think five people in one group. So uh, we should uh, work together to make uh, the design and about the uh, the material about the mental health. So the trouble is, well, for me as a design designer, uh, post designer Instagram, yeah, I think. Uh, the trouble is about when I uh, didn't have creativity to make the design of the post should be a catching in the people see the post on instagram for me as a designer uh, is the, the instagram designer so what about you uh, jessica uh, what are is there a problem by uh, uh, working on the uh, project with Nora? like I really agree with what she said. The time management thing, I have to say, is the hardest. We try every meeting to make a calendar of our posting dates, but since we do have a small group that's kind of part of a larger group chat that's kind of contributing to our posts, it's like having to regularly remember to, okay, I need to send out these things so we can collect the video clips needed or the stories needed so me and Nara and a few others can put together the posts. And sometimes it's also hard when like some people are unavailable for the meetings because like for me, the meetings are at 7 a.m. So there's nothing else I'm going to be doing at 7 a.m. besides coming to these meetings. But that's not the same time for everyone else. So everyone else has kind of like lives going on. A few people have school every once in a while. They'll test during that time. And so trying to get everyone there and everyone to understand what we're doing, even if they're unable to come to the Zoom call, sometimes it's difficult. But time management is the killer. <laughs> that's right. So talking about uh, school life, I, I just want to ask you uh, about, is there any uh, remedial system in uh, America if students uh, do not complete their task or examination? Is there any remedial systems like you have to do it uh, again uh, because you are not uh, doing the, the task or the task that teachers uh, gave you? Okay, um, we can get like missing assignments in class if you don't turn things in. Your grades start to drop a lot and that can be like kind of punishment in itself. But if you do end up failing courses, you either have to make them up through summer school, make them up through the next year, or like if you don't meet all the requirements, you do not graduate. So there's always that looming threat if you fail all, enough classes and you fail the needed or required classes, you will not graduate high school and you'll have to come back for after senior year. So I hope, I think that's a big motivator. I'm a bit of a stickler in school, so I've not been in a situation like that, but they can definitely hold you back. And uh, what are the events at <laughs> school? <laughs> this question about how did it feel when you got the scholarship abroad I, I got a scholarship Nara did uh, but she was 
she's doing it online currently. I'm just an American student. Okay, there there are some questions in the chat. Maybe you uh, you can read Dia the question. Yes, uh, this question is from Vanessa. Uh, she said, "I want to ask to Naura and Jessica, how did you guys feel when uh, you guys got a scholarship abroad? What do you guys feel?" Jessica already answered this before. I didn't get any scholarship abroad. Uh, I'm an American student. I've been living here around my whole life. So, Nara. <laughs> my custom question has started. Okay. Okay. Uh, how did it feel when I got scholarship abroad? Okay. Actually, I, I can't imagine when... Uh, oh, why why I am get uh, this scholarship? Like I think the uh, there are my friends have their uh, that they they are a uh, good for than me and they are better from me. So maybe all of student exchange in Indonesia feel like that. I think, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, I feel very happy. But uh, as you know, just for information, the selection of the scholarship is not one day, two day, or uh, or three days. The selection of the scholarship uh, take time until two years. So I registration to this scholarship when I uh, ten grad, and I will uh, go to the U.S. when I. 12th grad. Yeah, like that. Okay, thank you for the answers. I hope it's uh, answered correctly. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, who, who else want to ask another question? Uh, this you is can... from Hana, Jember Hana. Maybe Hana, you can open your mic and you can ask. Yeah. Is there any Hana here? Silakan Hana. Boleh open mic. Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes we can. Okay, I want to ask about uh, to Nora and Jessica. Uh, as we know, we are in a pandemic era because COVID-19 which is make us uh, difficult to understand the lessons. Uh, so I want to ask, uh, I'm so sorry if out of topic, uh, how do you understand the lesson and how do you handle uh, when you get, uh, when you're lazy to understand the lesson? Uh, yeah. That, uh, <laughs> I'm still confused to talk with English language. I uh, hope you understand about my question. Thank you. Okay, maybe from Naura first and then Jessica will answer. <laughs> Actually, uh, due to pandemic situation, I, uh, I didn't too much focus with my school because I was my time with the outside activity, I think. Um, the activity uh, yeah, in outside from my school, yeah, I was my time with the uh, competitions, movie competitions, um, and many more competition that I, I see in the internet or Instagram so I'm very um, excited to to do that uh, then I uh, learned in my school but yeah um, when I led when I feel lazy mm, when I feel lazy oh yeah I watch the motivational videos and I I watch the motivational movies from America and I watch um, 
yeah so i'm uh, when i laziness i make a story uh, in my diary uh, and i think that's uh, that's very comfortable <laughs> uh, to me uh, when i feel bad uh, or lazy to so i i make a diary and after that i yeah i get a motivation to start the the academic in my virtual school but actually uh, in my school they didn't uh, learn with uh, via zoom or like or a uh, video call or something like that in my school they just use the whatsapp chatting to um to learn and i think that's not um that's not i think that not all of not all of students can understand what the what the teachers say in the whatsapp chatting group uh yeah i think like this so i feel you yeah i think just like that but the most important thing when the virtual uh virtual school the most important thing that um i very very uh um remain remain to to myself yes even the virtual school or the virtual uh exams i should be honest uh i should be honest uh i didn't um mind what my uh, score um if they're low or high i didn't i didn't um mind about that so in the in the important thing that when the virtual school i just uh remain to myself that i should be the honest people just like that wow okay now uh jessica how you handle your la your laziness in learning you can share to us Ooh, good question okay <laughs> um whenever i get like really unmotivated my first thought is kind of like have i had coffee and have i had water like those are two things that can get me really because sometimes it's just because my body doesn't want to work anymore so i kind of get my body ready to work and if i think i can i kind of set up a space that's like comfortable for me i sit in the chairs i like i get a candle lit and i just kind of make sure i'm by a window and i'm not too hot or too cold and just kind of take care of that so i can get some work done other than that, sometimes you have to indulge in it. I'll call my girlfriend. I'll um, watch my comfort show. It's just like taking care of yourself in these little ways, but also setting limits. Like I'm going to watch one episode of the show and then I need to get back to work, you know? And it's just making sure you don't get sucked into anything too much. That includes schoolwork. I can't suck myself into schoolwork the whole day. That's not healthy. But I also can't suck myself into watching TV in bed the whole day because that's not healthy either like sometimes one of those days happen and that's not like something to get mad at yourself about but it's just kind of moderation moderation is definitely key when it comes to feeling unmotivated feeling lazy and taking care of yourself all right and what do you think about cheating in usa what will the school do if that was happen cheating online or in person maybe uh two of them like went online and in person in person you automatically get a zero on the test and often the teacher sometimes or like it's kind of the worst punishment because sometimes you can take a zero on the test and that happens but what i've heard is a lot of teachers like don't really trust you and are really on watch about you for after that so it makes your life a lot more difficult like i had a teacher last year who uh caught a student cheating and it was like for American students to go to college, you need letters of recommendation from teachers to like say, this is a good student, someone you want at your school. And those teachers who, if you cheat, it's really what I've heard from some people, hard to find people who don't write you letters of recommendation. So there's some punishments in place, but honestly, some of the worst of it is the fact that your teachers just don't support or trust you is what I think. Okay, now uh, in Naura perspective, what about cheating in Indonesia? Okay, okay. As I said before, uh, 
I see, I see that um, uh, maybe uh, most of uh, student Indonesian students um, uh, be uh, the cheating uh, when the virtual program I think, but when at my school, uh, when the school staff know the the students uh, cheating, they will uh, process on on uh, the counseling. And in my school, they have uh, um, like uh, quotes. I think quotes. Yeah, quotes uh, about the cheating is haram in my school, <laughs> like that. <laughs> so when the school staff see the student cheating, they maybe uh, they get a zero score and they their parents will uh, call to the school. Okay, uh, wow, that's interesting because we make sure about uh, the religion and also what we do like kidding. Now, next, there's a question from, oh, okay, Laura, anymore? You want to add something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, will, I will answer the Hana question before, but I will answer in Indonesian's, uh, Indonesian language. Okay, it's okay. No problem? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, T tadi Hana nanya, kalau misalnya uh, now, itu ngerasa malas gimana? Um, jadi sebenarnya, uh, tentang rasa malas itu sendiri pasti terjadi pada semua orang. Bahkan orang paling pintar sedunia pun, pasti dia masan kayak uh, malas gitu kan. Tapi the, the important thing, the hal yang paling now sadari ketika rasa malas itu datang adalah pas kita lagi malas tuh berarti tandanya tubuh kita tuh emang uh, pengen istirahat gitu karena rasa malas uh, itu mungkin terjadi karena kita terlalu lelah atau kita punya banyak pikiran dan biasanya yang nolak ini tuh setelah lain yang tadi nonton motivational video atau uh, lihat-lihat uh, apa aja impian-impian now selama ini yang pengen now raih now biasanya membiarkan rasa malas itu dengan melakukan hal yang now sukai emang kayak sesuka-suka banget gitu dan terkadang um, hal itu perlu untuk menjaga kondisi kesehatan mental kita biar nanti kalau misalnya kita udah bangkit lagi pasti setelah pasti kita nggak mungkin dong kita akan merasa malas terus 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 terusan gitu kan pasti kita juga setelah rasa malas itu pasti di ujungnya di ujung rasa kemalasan itu pasti kita merasa kok dari kemarin saya malas-malas dulu ya kok dari kemarin gue kayak orang yang nggak ada kerjaan gitu ya pasti kita merasa kayak gitu kan dan setelah muncul rasa itu pasti kita akan tergerak lagi untuk bangkit gitu jadi mungkin ketika kita malas itu kita butuh sampai kepada ujungnya sampai diri kita merasa hidup gue ngapa ngapain aja ya selama ini ya kok kayaknya orang tuh berprestasi ya kok gue kayaknya diam diam aja ya di rumah ini ya terus ya maybe kita harus mendapatkan rasa itu dulu baru kita akan bisa bangkit dari dalam diri kita sendiri kalau misalnya yang tadi nonton video motivasi atau baca quotes itu kan dari uh, luar itu kan kalau dari dalam diri kita sendiri kita kayak bingung gitu kan maunya gimana sih supaya kita tuh pengen bisa lagi belajar gitu kita tuh udah coba kita paksain tapi kalau kita paksain itu nggak masuk kotak kita gitu kan jadi mungkin harus uh, membiarkan rasa malas itu maksudnya membiarkan kayak ini lah jangan kayak ngotot banget gitu loh dan membiarkan rasa malas itu sampai timbul suatu hal dalam diri kita yang bertanya kepada diri sendiri gue dari kemarin ngapa ngapa pengen aja ya, kok kayaknya gini-gini banget hidup gue gitu. Sampai itu muncul, pasti kita akan tergerak lagi untuk bangkit. Kayak gitu. Ya, yeah, that's all. Oke, okay, thank you that's so much, all. Lana. Next right. is a question from the chat. Yes, uh, we have a question from Regina. And it's, I think it's very interesting question. And it it's for uh, Jessica. Uh, so, do you intend to join an exchange program in the future? Okay, so I'm in my last year of high school and after this I go to university, so I will not be able to do exchange in high school, but I am looking into studying abroad in college and being able to get some credits in a different country and 
like use some of the language skills I picked up with my foreign language course. Thank so you. What, what is yeah. the most uh, country that you want to go first for the studying growth? Honestly, I don't even know. I probably, I don't know. I like have been looking at a lot of the different schools I'm considering going to and thinking about what country looks most appealing. And I think it's going to be wherever they can kind of fit whatever major I'm in. I'll hopefully go to. Yeah, I haven't made plans in regards to it as I'm not at school yet there, but we're figuring it out. <laughs> I would hope to. Yeah, <laughs> I hope to. So there's a next question. You can read it, Dia. Uh, yeah, another question from Natasha. Uh, she said, I want to ask about mental health, especially about self-love, maybe. So now I'm trying to accept myself no matter what. But at the same time, I feel like I can't be my best version. I feel like I'm better before when I can force myself to get what I want. And now I just I just surrender to, to the situation. Do you think it's uh, normal? Is this to me? Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's completely normal. It is completely normal to feel like you are struggling to love yourself how you are because you think you're not your best self. But part of that, I feel like, is loving yourself for the process, you know? Like, every day, like, if I wake up and I'm not feeling the greatest about myself, partially just kind of looking in the mirror and being like, so this is me today. And I'm proud of all the things I've accomplished so far. And I'm proud of how hard I'm working to accomplish more things in the future. And so a lot of it, which is hard to do, is just loving yourself for the process and loving yourself for trying so hard and getting through another day. Because some days you just have to love yourself for getting out of bed and drinking water. Like every day is different. Your life and your body fluctuate. Everything fluctuates. And you have, like say, this is where I am but I love myself for what I've done and for my potential. And yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, thank you for answering the question. So. Okay, next. Uh, Nora, can you answer the, the question, the same question? Oh, about a uh, question from Natasha. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's normal, totally normal, because I feel you. I I feel you. Um, like um, in our life, it's not uh like uh like um hike and don't and when I. Oh, wait, wait, I will, uh, I try to read the question. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's normal. Um, but, okay. Uh, yeah, it's normal, uh, because I feel you and the when you when you think that when you when you try to self uh, to uh, to self love to yourself and i think that's when you can accept your cross showing uh, about yourself i think like that uh yeah be, uh, dima uh the some audience Ask me to in the private chat. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can share the question. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, this is from. Uh, there's no problem if if I share in the general, in the global. Yeah, no problem. And also, if the the one that give the question want to ask directly it, it it's okay too like okay. just ask by talking open your mic <laughs> don't be hesitated okay this 
this from uh, Zahra from SMA Negeri 1 Pontianak. He asked, what was the most difficult problem that you faced in the US? Okay. Uh, actually, I didn't yet go to the US, but <laughs> during the virtual program that I see that the difficult uh, things is about language. Yeah, language. Bef uh, and based on the, my seniors' uh, experience, uh, the most difficult problem that uh, that see that in the U.S. is about uh, you should uh, you should uh, feel heartwarming with your house family. I think it's. Uh, not at all of people feel like this, but I think that's uh, that is the difficult uh, things for me. And the next question is from Emeria Putri. What was it so difficult to adapt to the new culture and what is the best memory you have ever met in the US? Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, maybe uh, she, uh, she asked about virtual program because I didn't go to the U.S. yet. Uh, the best memory is about when my host family show to me uh, their house and their show about what the activity during the virtual program because uh, just for your information, my house family, um, it's uh, very difficult uh, to communicate, yeah. Okay, now I take a question for Jessica. Like, uh, Jessica, you, you've already been exposed to a lot of people from another country. You met a lot of friends. And what are the big tips for you to easy going to all of them? Like there are a lot of language and how you adapt to the language too. <laughs> because I think it's a little bit different, right? Like the pronunciation and many things. You can tell us how you adapt. Oh, about the pronouns as well? Okay. Um, something I have to remember when I'm talking to people who either don't speak English, like usually don't speak English as a first language is just first of all, slowing down. I talk really fast normally and I feel like I still am <laughs> but I can talk a lot really really fast and sometimes I'm like people who speak English since the day they were born don't understand what I'm saying so sometimes it's just taking a breath slowing down also just the understanding that there's a good chance that if someone takes a minute before they respond to you they understand what they you said and they're just trying to process and how to respond. And I feel like that's something that's a lot more prevalent in other cultures and then um, traditional American cultural curves. Cause like, I have a lot of friends who just speak before they think. And honestly, that's not the best all the time. So I think it's just kind of the patience and the slowing down of your words and such. Um, and then a few things I've had to explain some other times is pronouns I'd like to keep in my name, especially on Zoom calls. Uh, in the United States, it's become a bit more normalized to um, put your pronouns places and it's working on the normalization, putting my pronouns out there as I am a cisgendered woman as I was born female, but I still identify as woman, but that's not everyone's situation. Some people are born female and choose to identify as male. Some people are born male and choose not to identify with a gender. And so everyone has different pronouns that they're comfortable with being called. So I'm comfortable being called with she, her feminine pronouns. And being able to like kind of put that out there makes it easier for people whose pronouns aren't the automatic ones you use for them. Like if someone looks masculine, you'd like go by instinct, want to refer to they, them as he, him pronouns, but that's not always what they're comfortable with. So that's another thing that's become different, I guess. Okay, so it's really interesting to have a lot of people, a lot of friends from another country. We can learn uh, how to communicate with them, and 
maybe this is the last question from Grega Sierra Tangsel. Okay, hi. Oh, 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 Grega, do you want to talk by your own? Like you talk directly? Just open your mic. Okay, hello. Hello, guys. Can you hear my voice? Hi, yes. Okay, sure. Uh, I want to ask uh, you, Naura, about how you get the scholarship and there is any trick or uh, something you should do to get the scholar because uh, I'm interesting to and I mean I interact to uh, to re register uh, next year uh, yeah <laughs> uh, uh, there is uh, if uh, there is any tricks or something you should do uh, we should do can you please tell us thank you thank you Thank you, Greg Sera Ilmu from Tangsel. Okay. Um, actually, this scholarship, uh, especially the KLDS program, this is a program to the grade 10 and 11 high school in Indonesian students. So if you in 12 class, class um, the bad news you can register these programs but uh, okay i will uh, i will tell about this program so the kls program this uh, fully funded scholarship uh, maybe we can say free program to the indonesian students but the host country that we choose just american just the usa uh, we didn't choose the any countries uh, like Europe or Asia or uh, or Japan, but in the Sky Alias program, you you just uh, can choose the United States as your host country, and you tell but uh, how you get the scholarship. Right? And the next question: some tricks. Okay, some tricks. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know what I'm doing before I uh, what I'm doing what I'm doing during the selection. Why um, I I can be the finalist of the KLS program, but the most important the most important thing that I do when I selections to this program is be yourself, just be yourself, and during the KLS program, I know more about myself and this is not about who the smartest uh, to speaking English this is not about the smart uh, student in Indonesia this is not about the ranking the one uh, ranking ranking one in your class this is about how you uh, can know more about yourself during this selection and how you um, be the best version of yourself and you can accept what your shortcomings uh, in your in your in your life in your uh, in your life uh, in in yourself i think uh, the tricks is be yourself during the selections and you should prepare all of the tests like uh, si and yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, uh, you should prepare. Don't be deadliner, and don't be deadliner. You should be the best version of yourself and be honest. You didn't ask to be the other people. You just be yourself, and you should uh, show all of the uh, the the. Be as well. The oh, uh, I'm sorry. So you should show your your talent, your your characteristic to uh give uh, to the to the U.S. Department of Tests. I think like that. Because just for your informations, uh, actually, when I selections this KLS program I register to the KLS program is the is the 
Hamin satu. Apa itu Hamin satu? <laughs> ya, Hamin satu pokoknya. Hamin satu. Um, and I um, I collect my essay 15 minutes before the registrant close. <laughs> and I make the essay <laughs> I make essay. Um, uh, I think ten hours before the the before the registration close, and I don't know why. Why I I be the finalist the KLS program? Because I think that the all of people better than me. Yeah. So maybe um, okay. And the last is when I the selections in the chapter. I mean the chapter is uh, re, some regions. Before we go to the national, we should uh, test in the chapter. When I selection in chapter, um, they uh, they are uh, some friend, some people. I think my friends that. Um, when we uh, have a group discussions test uh, in the chapter, we have a group discussion test and we discuss about uh, some problems and the uh, and the judges can see uh, how to we solve some problems and when that situations, um, my friends. Uh, like mengaku-ngaku uh, uh, that that my uh, my idea is her idea. So when the judges tell us, uh, so this idea from 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 who uh, from the judges and my friends said, ah, oh, that's my idea. That's my idea. And I think that ah. Oh, no, that's not your idea. This is my idea. So when you tell the judges that's your idea, so when she do that, I feel like uh, okay, maybe uh, maybe she better than me. Okay, just 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 forget about that. And I didn't I didn't expect that uh, I can be the finalist of KLS program. Maybe just a story from my elections, from my selections. All right. Now this is a very last question from Dimas Fitri for Jessica. Yeah, I've been thinking about it very often. Do you know what's the difference between British English and American English? Cause I barely see any difference. <laughs> there's not really much of one. They're both the same language, just there's different accents, British language versus American English. And then there's different slang. Like if I get a fry and they're like the potatoes that are fried up, I'll call it a fry, but they'll call it a chip. And it's like, or if I get like what I call a chip, they'll call it a crisp. It's just different slang. Some different words for things, but same language. <laughs> All right. Now uh, it's already one hour, more than more than one hour, and we already talked much things about the school life and cultural diversity that we had in both Indonesia and also United States. And now uh, I want uh, Jessica and Naura to give a closing statement. Anything about what you want to share to us, like uh, if you want to uh, like motivational things you want to give to us. Yeah, uh, you can start from Jessica. Okay. Um, I got a lot of private messages. Um, thank you for private messaging me during the session. It was fun to hear stories and ask to give advice. Um, but you are you and you've worked hard and you've come far and it's about being proud of yourself and being proud of the process and being proud of yourself for not where you've as much as where you've gotten and where you've been than to how dedicated and hardworking you've been. So no one's gonna know you like you. So it's about what you think about yourself and just know you're strong. Okay, now, now rest turn. <laughs> okay, um, the, last, the last speech, <laughs> the last speech for you, uh, it's don't turn yourself into a con. 
if you keep dreaming high and don't try hard to reach it. Yeah, that's just that's all for me. Don't turn yourself into a can if you keep dreaming high and you and you don't try hard to reach it. All right. Now before we close, we will have a photo together. So guys, you can open your camera because we want to see your face, your happy face. <laughs> Please turn on your camera. Okay, Reva. Great. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you so much guys. You already came to this uh, meeting. I really hope that you can get something and learn something from this meeting. And I want to say big thanks to both of you guys, Naura and Jessica. Uh, it is very uh, ins uh, inspiring me to get a motivation from you guys. And uh, you guys are so awesome. And thank you. Thank you. Start, uh, yeah, I, I will start capturing this Zoom so you can smile. <laughs> One, two, three, cheese. And also, if you want to make an Instagram story, don't forget to tag at rejago.id, at naufa, and also at jess.zahel. Yes, and the next, the next one is one, two, three, cheese. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Is there any testimony you want to give to us here? Anyone, you can make your testimony here directly. Who want to talk? Uh, Dima, uh, when the last they collect the uh, the story, the Instagram story. Okay. Oh yeah. Don't forget to make the testimony of an Instagram story today's meeting to get the this kind of picture. This is a picture from the leaves, and you can custom your face here. Yeah, yeah, the requirement is you, you have to follow this this Instagram and also you make a testimony from this meeting. And Naura will choose Naura will choose the best testimony and you will get this free. Uh, the last collection is on it's tomorrow yes. 8 p.m. Yeah. So do it immediately so you can uh, win a great prize. Yeah, and don't private your Instagram. You can use your second SSA. It's okay. You can use your second account uh, and just make the best testimony. Okay. So, anyone want to talk here? Any testimony here directly? Can I go? Yeah, of course, Tata. Yeah. <laughs> okay. First of all, thank you for Jessica and Aura as well. Uh, I, I get a lot of information here, especially about American cultures, which is, I learned it also from my house mom, which is kind of different because they live in the rural, rural area. So thank you, Jessica, for coming here. I get lots of culture that might be different. And thank you for Naura for explaining about Indonesian culture as well. For Jessica, maybe you learn something new. Yay, everyone. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, I really happy that everyone came here and see you next meeting. And goodbye, everyone. Bye. Don't forget to Bye. make the story, Instagram story. <laughs>